Hey, Steve Yanni here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Berninson Auto Wrecking in Berninson, Massachusetts with a second gen Ford Econoline van, 1968 and a half through 1974. But this one's kind of cool. The super van logo on the bottom right here tells us there's something kind of cool happening here. Now, we've got to remember that in the first generation Falcon based vans of the 60s, super van meant that it had the same 90 inch wheelbase, but Ford added an 18 inch long caboose to the back to give it more interior volume. That was the super van. Well, for the second generation vans, there'd be no more cabooses. That would happen in 78 up in the third gens. But when it said super van on one of these things, we're talking longer wheelbase. Before we get into that, you gotta remember 1977, a little guy named George Barris came up with something called the super van right here. This is a little different, but this is a custom van. In fact, uh, Richard Rawlings, at Barrett Jackson bought the real life version of this super van. It's a model kit that was done by IMC and uh, testers in 1977. But my question is, did Ford ever come after testers for the use of super van? You gotta wonder. But as we move forward, again, when it comes to a Ford van, super van in second gen means that it goes on the 123 inch wheelbase, which is 18 inches longer than the base. What that gave you was a 10 foot long cargo bed in the back, which made it the super van. Now, the thing is, the 18 foot overall length of the super van was about four feet shorter than a Country Squire station wagon. So it had more cargo capacity, but it was actually smaller and shorter than a typical full size wagon. So these things were very popular with plaster people, you know, trades, tradesmen who uh, would use these things as work vehicles. But this one here is a 1972, which was, as we saw earlier in another van video, first year for the sliding side door. We can see the scar along the side. What is that? Well, this is where the sliding door used to go on this particular model. Again, 1972 through 74 were the only years you could get the sliding side door on a second gen Ford van. They didn't have in 68, 69. And in fact, the sliding side door was kind of cribbed from the Volkswagen second generation micro bus but it worked just as good on a Ford as it did on a micro bus. Now inside this one, you can see the tools of the trade, a lot of miscellaneous stuff. And right here again, this is a Ford Truck Times from fall of 68. And again, this is the year that the Econoline second gen van uh, came out and was kind of the big deal. And here's the Econoline ad inside of this thing. And the whole point of the second gen Econoline is that circular red picture shows us on the left hand side, that's the old Econoline with the engine right in the middle. If you're sitting in the front, you can't get into the cargo bay without going around and getting out and getting rained on. For the second gen, they moved the engine over like almost a foot to the right and made it so the driver could get back. On the third generation of Conline vans, Ford went even further. They pushed the engine way forward like this one here, making it so that the doghouse was pretty small and either the passenger or the driver could walk right into the back. But again, step by step, the Econoline van evolved from first to second to third gen. In fact, the third generation Econolines, I think went out of production like just recently, they went a long time, 1975 through recently. Now this one here being a second gen, the these finally could be had with a V8. Uh, there's no motor in this one here. There's a big void right there, uh, no sign of an engine, but this was either a six cylinder or a 302. Now the thing is the second gen Econa lines, like this one, 68 and a half through 74, no big blocks. The biggest engine possible was a 302 two barrel. No 351s, no 400s. They were possible in other Ford vehicles, but not here. So again, the Econa line grew from strength to strength. And one thing too about these is that the engine cover and engine was moved over. So the passenger seat up front was actually kind of tidy. The foot area was very small. And in fact, the passenger front seat was an option on these things. Kind of weird, but something special in this one, this option right here says high output. Look at that. Is that a reference to a high performance engine? Nope. Ford actually advertised their heavy duty heaters with that high output logo on it right there. Now that logo was never used on a passenger car, but again, high output refers to the fact that this heater really cranks. Now again, we're in Massachusetts. You need a high output heater here in Massachusetts where it gets cold in the winter time. But again, this is the uh, second generation. And the big thing about these, it was really amazing, or at least you know, groundbreaking in 68 and a half was the fact that these had an opening hood. Now we've referenced this before, but why not say it again? Because it's very important. Uh, the hood on these things was actually a panel that opened to give access to the battery, to the transmission fluid, engine fluid, wiper, brake fluid, all that stuff. Uh, and again, that's something that you did not see on any Chevy or Dodge van until well after Ford introduced it here in 1968 and a half on the second gen. Now this one here is a painted grill with uh, the Ford logo. There was actually a stainless steel bright grill that was optional. So this is kind of a, a very generic basic vehicle. 
Great example, and again, something just the evolution. You can see the hinges here are exposed on the second gen. Right here, the hood is kind of short. As we get over to the back of this one, the hinges are hidden. And again, that hood becomes so much longer right here. So again, the evolution. And speaking of evolution, if you want to go out and evolve yourself, you need to smell good. This is an Avon Vantastic. That looks like a little, little van and on the back, on the bottom, it says you're Avon Vantastic. But here's the trick. You take the front off, you do this, and you got a date. But again, these things are available at swap meets. You can kind of find them any old place. Just don't break this open, it'll stink for a long time. But again, it's kind of patterned, patterned after an Econoline van, kind of weird. And again, Avon made these things in the Plymouth Superbird, Dodge Daytona, et cetera. A lot of different shapes and sizes, but this is a fantastic, pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna get a date tonight because of that. But again, this is the second generation Ford Econoline van. Again, a super van, this one right here. Now the super van name would live on in the third gen. And in fact, Ford would eventually combine the long wheelbase and the caboose tail onto the, the ultimate super van in 78 onward. Those are the vans that are some of the longest passenger vehicles on the planet, really with four tires on them. But again, this is the middle generation super van right here, 1972, close to the end of the line. 74 would be the last year for these before they went to the, the third gen in 75. But there it is, man. Uh, pretty much uh, this, this one has uh, seen its last day on the job site, but I've got a date to get to because I'm smelling really good. But we'll see you tomorrow with more junkyard crawling here at Burnson Auto Rental.